This is the fourth and closing section on the topic of sprites and we'll try to utilize what we learned so far to construct a simple game. The objective here is to show some examples of how to build elements or components of a game so that anybody could take it from here and further expand in whichever direction. Also, we will flip this discussion and instead of the usual build from scratch approach, we will first quickly demonstrate the outcome and then discuss how each of the important segments was coded. So what we have here is a simple game where we control the red ghost using what we learned in the first lesson with the goal of avoiding the other two ghosts. The yellow ghost moves along straight paths and every time it reaches an edge, it randomly reappears from the midpoint of the other three edges. So in coding its motion, we adopt what was learned in the second lesson. Finally, the green ghost moves such that it bounces randomly off the edges in an obvious nod to our third lesson. To make it more interesting, both yellow and green ghosts speed up every time they hit an edge. In addition to the sprites, there's a start button for the game with the prompt play. Next to it, kept invisible until the game is over, is a game over sign. And on the right side is a timer that measures how many seconds the player survives avoiding two ghosts. Before demonstration, just a quick summary of what we placed in the designer space. At the top, we organized one button and the two text boxes within this horizontal layout. The remaining screen space is filled with a canvas within which the game takes place. Obviously, we inserted the three images as sprites for the ghosts, they're right here. And lastly, we added a clock, which is invisible here on the screen, but we need it as we want to track time. Now, let's demonstrate the game before moving on to the most important discussion, how to code each of these elements of the game. To start the game, we press the play button, which then changes to game on, and all the sprites initially move randomly. We control the red sprite by flinging it, right, which by mouse is not as easy. It is much more convenient to do it on the touch screen, uh, and it responds much better. You see the other two ghosts do what was basically designed for them to do. You see also if they uh, collide, they bounce off of each other, green bounce off of the yellow one, and finally this is the end of the game when one of them reaches the red ghost, the red ghost disappears, the other two ghosts stop, there's a sign game over, right? There's a prompt now back if we want to play another round, and here's our score. We survived for 26 seconds. Okay, so let's move on to the block section and see how this is all done. And let's expand it here. So since we want to change the uh, speed of the yellow and green ghosts, uh, we need to initialize them as global variables. The same holds for the start time for our timer for the game. We need also to initialize that one. And then we're going to examine the event handlers, right? So the first one is what happens at the start of the game. When we press the start button right here, we want to basically reset all the parameters and initialize motion uh, for all of the three ghosts. So this is what is done here in the beginning, right? We clear the time, setting it to zero. Then we make the red ghost visible again because he disappeared uh, when the game was over. And then we want to reset and make disappear the game over sign, right? Because we're gonna start, we're starting now a new game. We wanna change the play prompt to game on when the game is on. And then the rest of it is setting each of these ghosts in motion. So for the green one, we see we put both X and Y uh, initial uh, coordinates as uh, 
random between zero and the width for x and the zero and the height so completely random in space and the heading is also completely random from zero to 360 degrees and then we set its speed right that is set initially as the global variable for the yellow ghost right here it's slightly different because we first position it uh, at the midpoint in x and then from there uh, we give it uh, two options random direction that is up this 90 or down 270 so this is how it's initialized along with its initial speed right here and then for the red ghost that we're going to control eventually we started by setting the random heading between 0 and 360 and the random speed uh, between 3 and 5 initially then we want to initialize the timer and uh, call the clock uh, to start right so the next uh, event handler is uh, for the red ghost that one's pretty simple because we just want to control it by flinging by the player and we set both its heading and the speed uh, depend on the direction and the speed of the fling so this is how the player controls the red ghost now let's see what happens with the green ghost so a green ghost that initially moves randomly eventually is going to hit an edge and we decided that the green ghost is going to bounce randomly off of the edge so for that event handler we need first to figure out which edge is reached right so one is at the top minus one is bottom three is right edge and the remaining one is minus three which is the left edge for each of them right we want to set uh, the random bounce and that's going to depend uh, direction of the bounce is going to depend on the edge right so for instance if the top edge is reached right here if it's one we need to set the heading to be uh, in the downward direction right so we need to set this heading between 180 and 360 degrees that is going to be downward from this top surface and similar for the others right if it's the right edge which is number three then it has to move to the left right and so on uh, here also we see that we increment the speed so we change this global speed for the green uh, incremented by one every time the edge is reached as we said and uh, we just set this speed now this is the actual execution of setting the speed uh, this was for the green ghost and then we said if the green ghost collides with the yellow ghost we want it to make a slight bounce and this is what is done here if the green ghost collides and that other is yellow then we want to move the green ghost so it essentially is going to bounce in the x direction we're going to bounce it either plus or minus 15 pixels and in the y direction we're going to bounce it kind of opposite to its heading so this is what is done if essentially is moving up right then the bounce is going to be down which is by adding these 25 pixels or here if the initial moving is down we're going to bounce it up so it's going to be minus 25 pixels this is what is done uh, obviously the bounce can be done in many ways this is just one example here is uh, our clock we also initialize the clock timer and uh, we're setting this uh, uh, clock that uh, counts how many seconds uh, we survive in the game by reading the uh, current clock time and then essentially uh, since the this readout is in milliseconds we need to divide by thousand to actually display uh, that reading in seconds uh, this is uh, everything we have on this side and now let's check what do we do with the yellow um, ghost right so when the yellow ghost reaches the edge this is right here this is the event handler so what we said we wanted to do 
is uh, depending on which edge is reached, it's supposed to uh, randomly reappear for any of the other three edges and from their midpoints, right? So the way we do that, we first initialize uh, this uh, variable sides that has all the edges. So it's uh, top, bottom, right, and left. And then we remove from this list, uh, depending on which side is reached, we want to remove that one. So say if the right one is reached, it's going to be number three is going to be removed from here. And the sides list is going to have only one minus three and uh, one minus one and minus three. So next one is going to be to pick a random number from these remaining three sides. And once that random number is picked from this list, then we just need to figure out which one it is, right? So depending on which one it is, we're going to position uh, uh, our uh, yellow ghost at the midpoint. So for instance here, right, if this uh, randomly selected is one, what are we doing? We're positioning it, that's the top surface, in X, it's going to be in the midpoint, right, for the top surface, and the Y is going to be zero at the top surface. And the heading away from the top surface is going to be straight down, which means that the heading needs to be set to 27. And, right, so for each of them, it's a similar procedure. So let's just check another example. If it reached, uh, if it needs to reappear, at the right side, which is number three, right? For the right side, what do we need to do? We need to set the X all the way to the width of the uh, canvas minus the actual width of the sprite, right? So this is the, as far as it can go to the right. And then in the Y, it needs to be at the midpoint. And this is exactly what is set here. And uh, for the heading, right, since we're on the right edge, the heading needs to be to the left. Straight to the left is 180, so this is why we set uh, 180. And right, this is done for each of the options that we have here. Uh, as for the green one, for the yellow goose, we also increment its speed every time it reaches an edge, and we set this new speed. And we're almost done. The only one that is left here is when the end of the game is reached, right? So the end of the game is reached when the red ghost collides with other. It doesn't matter which one other. It can be yellow or green. So what do we want to do when the end of the game is reached? We made the red ghost invisible. We set the speed. We stop basically yellow and green ghosts at their speeds to zero. We make the game over sign right here appear in its space in the middle top. Uh, we change the uh, start button prompt to play, to prompt the basically player for another round. Uh, we stop the clock as well, and then we res reset these global speeds for the Y and green um, uh, ghosts. And uh, that's it. This is all we needed to do uh, to get this uh, uh, simple game in motion. And uh, before we end, uh, we can start another round here. And I just want to remind everybody that there is now a playlist that uh, essentially has all of these four lessons uh, combined uh, in a single space. This is it for now. Until the next time, bye. <laughs>